Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to upload a Blazor server app to Azure. And if you have a ASP.NET Core web app instead, then it's also okay. The main purpose of this video is just to show you how you upload your website to Azure. So the first thing we will do is to actually just quickly set up a project. And that will be the project that we're going to upload to Azure. So I'll just go and open Visual Studio. Then I'll say I'll create a new project and I'll just choose a Blazor server app. It really it doesn't matter what we call it we could just call it test app and then say next in this case we're just going to use the dotnet 7 framework again it really doesn't matter what you use if you have a project with a dotnet 5 or dotnet 6 then it's also okay because inside azure you can just choose whatever framework that your app is using but this should be okay for now so i'll just say create and now we have our test app so the first thing i will do is actually just go to the index file and then just go and delete these things and instead of hello world then say my first test app azure so it's just so that we know that it's actually our app that we see when we upload it and we try to connect to the right url that azure is creating for us so i'll just quickly go and see if it's working and it looks good so we have my first test app azure and then we of course have the counter page and fetch data page so let's go and close it and now we should be able to just go to azure and if you're totally new to azure then you can go and create a free account i even think that you will actually get some money you will get around 200 dollars that you can start with so if you go to azure.microsoft.com you can go and say free account and as you can see you start with 200 us dollar and you have 30 days to use these $200. But you can just go and say start free. And then you can go and create an account. I already have an account. So I'll just go back. And then I'll say sign in. And this is the Azure portal that you are going to hit when you have logged in. So if you don't know Azure, then a lot of the features that they have is actually known as resources. So for example, if you have a website that you want to host on Azure, then it is a resource. And for these resources, you can make resource groups. And if you don't have them right here, you can go and click on the menu. And then you have under our favorites, we have all resources resources groups and the area where we actually go and create the server for our web page is actually under the app services but what I want to start to do is to go to the resources groups and then I just want to make a group for this resource so it's really just to organize all your apps a little bit better than just having them all as just a resource because when you have a lot of resources then I do believe that it can go and be quite a mess if you don't group them so as you can see we start with the Azure subscription one here and what this is is actually just a billing group because a lot of the features on Azure is costing money so you could go and create some different subscriptions and that's actually just to go and say who is going to pay for this in my case I only have the Azure subscription one and then under this subscription I want to create a resource group and let's just go and call it Blazor apps so you can really go and call this whatever you want if you have a big company and there is a specific department uh, maybe the it department have their own subscription here because they maybe have their own account where the money should be taken from then you just say where you take the money from and you could call it the resource group could be just it but of course it really depends on how many projects that you have and you can always go and play around with it later so the last one here is just a region as you can see choose the azure region that is right for you and your customers so in my case i'm actually sitting in europe and because i am from denmark then we can either go and take the north europe or maybe the sweden central because sweden is actually our neighbors so maybe i'll just go and say the sweden central and then either you can go and say next and go to the text i don't want to add any text to this so it's okay i'll just go and say review plus create and then it will just go and create some validation and as you can see it passed so i'll just go again and say create so now i did get a message here and it actually just said that the resource group has been created successfully. As you can see down here, I also have some credit and that is actually the $200. This is just how it's converted to the Danish crown. But let's close the notifications and then again, go to this menu 
and then we want to go to the app services because it's really in here that you want to create or set up the server so you can either go and say create app service or up in the left corner you can go and say create and as you can see again we have to choose which subscription should be paying for this and under our subscriptions we have a research group called blazer apps that we just created so now this web app will go under our blazer apps resource group we can then go and give our app a name and i actually do believe that you have to create a name that is not used before because as you can see this will extend in the dot azure websites dot net so it will actually be the url to the website that we're going to host so if i for example say test app then you can see this is not available because there is somebody else who have taken this name. So we could say test app one, two, three, four, and that has also been taken. So let's try something else. Let's go and say blazer server app and let's say 999. So now we actually have a unique name that nobody else is having. Of course, if you follow this tutorial, maybe you could say one after or two or just until you hit that nobody have actually done this so the next thing here is to say publish Should, is it code is it a docker container or a static web app and in our case it's actually just some code that we're going to publish and now we come to the fun part here where we can actually choose the .NET framework that our app is using and as you can see we can use .NET 7 or .NET 6 we have a .NET 7 project right now I can see that .NET 5 is not here I actually don't know why if you know why please go and comment it in the description so that we can all know why .NET 5 is not here maybe we just have to use 4.8 I actually don't know but I will just go and choose the .NET 7 framework and I'll go and say that the operating system should be Windows so that is okay the region I will again go and say I think it was Sweden Central so we have down here we have Sweden Central you of course have to choose something that is close to you so that you don't have to connect to the other side of the world to actually access your website let's say that if you live in Korea then you might not take a server in Sweden because it's pretty much on the other side of the world so you will just go and take one in Korea instead but the next thing is this pricing plant and as you can see here it will just create a new plan for us because we don't have any created yet and in this case it's also okay we can then go and see the pricing plans that we can choose from and as you can see here we have a plan where we can actually go and host a free website that is what we are doing right now and then of course we have some more expensive packages we can choose and it really depends on how many users that you have and how much memory that you need on your website and also the cpu how much cpu power do you want you can go to google and search for these plans so you more specifically can go and see what they do and why they cost more and more so basically just go and see what you get for the money but for now i'll just go and choose this plan because it is zero usd and it will be more than enough to fit the needs for our web app so now we can either go and say review and create or we can go to the next step which is deployment we can just go to the deployment so we can see how it looks and as you can see this has something to do with github and we're not going to set that up in our case so let's go to the network and again here you can see enable public access it is set to on so that's okay for us so let's go to the monitoring and as you can see it enables the application insights and that's actually another resource that is also created when we create this server and it's basically just so you can see how many visit your website and how much memory and data that your website is using the final step is the tags and just like before i'm not going to use this we're just going to review and create and now you can see that we have a review of our server that we are going to create and i think everything looks okay so we can just go and say create so i actually get an error which is saying that you can see this region has quota of zero instances for your subscription so it's a try selecting different region and i really i think that we have to go and do that so let's go back to the basics and let's scroll down and let's just go and take the east us which was the default that is selected so let's go and see if this should not be working so review and create and say create and now we can see that 
the deployment is in progress. I do think that we get we got the other error because that we are maybe using the free version of a server. So I think if you pay for the server, then you will be able to choose Sweden instead. So now it says that my deployment is complete. So if we click on the notification, we can see that it deployed the app here to the resource group that we also created and everything was done successfully. So if we go up to the menu now and we say resource groups, then we can click on our Blazor, Blazor app resource group. And in here we now have the Blazor server app 999 app service. So let's try to click on this and we can see that it's actually running right now. And up here we can see the default domain. So we can actually go and click it to come to the website that we created. And as you can see, your web app is running and waiting for your content so let's just close this and let's go and deploy our laser server app that we just created so we can go and right click on the project name and say publish and this time we can go and just click on azure and we say next and in this case we actually created a azure app service in windows so we could go and choose this windows and say next and now you can see you have to make sure that you're actually logged in with the same account as you're logged into in azure because as you can see here i was actually logged in on my setbit account when i tested this before i made this video so i couldn't see the resource group that i created so i had to log in to my real account and as you can see in here we have the subscriptions just like inside azure I have my Azure subscription one and in here we have the Blazor apps resource group that we created and here we have the actual server that is just waiting for us to upload our code. So we can click this server that we just created and we can go and say finish. So what it actually did now, it was not to publish our project to the service, it actually just set up our profile here so that we are ready to publish. So we can go and close this window. And then we can go and say publish. And now you can see when it has published the application, we actually get redirected to the URL that are online. So now the server app is actually uploaded. We have our text that we created. We have our counter that is also working and we have the fetch data page. So this was just a basic tutorial on how you upload your Blazor server app to Azure. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to come with some suggestions to other videos I could create both about Blazor, but also about Azure. And else just have a nice day. Bye.